So we are going to talk about the convolution theorem for Laplace transforms, which is super useful when we're trying to take the inverse Laplace transforms to find our final answer to a differential equation. To do that, we'll start out by looking at what is a convolution. We denote it by f star g of t, so this is the convolution of f with g, and that equals the integral from 0 to t of f of u times g of t minus u du. And this might seem like a really random and complicated expression to be looking at, but trust me, it's going to be very, very useful by the end. So we want to think about the Laplace transform of this convolution, f star g of t. If we do that, remember the definition of the Laplace transform is the integral from 0 to infinity of this function times e to the negative st. Our inner function is the integral from 0 to t of f of u times g of t minus u, and then we would have a du dt. Normally we would put the e to the negative st out here, but I'm going to bring it inside of this second integral. So we have this right here. Now, what we want to do to evaluate this double integral is to switch the order of integration. Again, if you haven't done multivariable calculus yet, Stick with us here, we'll be able to figure this out. Remember, with a single integral, we would be integrating over some linear range. But with a double integral, we're integrating over an area. So when we switch the order, we need to think about a different way to define that area. If we put t on our horizontal axis here and u on our vertical axis, notice that t is going to go from 0 to infinity. So it's going to go all the way out. And then for a particular value of t, u is going to go from 0 up to t. So if we think about the line here, and this line right here is u equals t, our integral is going to go over the area where u is less than this line, like this. Notice t is going to go all the way out to infinity, and u is going to start at 0 and increase to whatever t equals at this particular slice what we want to do is switch the order of integration. So we want to find that this double integral equals the integral of the integral on some range of the same input, g of t minus u e to the negative st, but now we're going to integrate with respect to t first and then with respect to u. So when we do this, let's think about, first of all, the range of u. Well, u is also going to increase from 0 up to infinity, because as t gets bigger, u is also going to be able to get bigger. So we can say u goes from 0 to infinity. For a particular value of u, if we look at t, notice, for example, if we take a look at this horizontal slice here, where u is a particular value, t is going to range from this point on the line, u equals t, all the way out to infinity. So the upper bound on t will be infinity for any value of u, but it's going to start at that value of u. So this is our flipped around double integral. And now we can try to evaluate this. Notice because we're integrating with respect to t first, f of u is a constant that we can bring to the outside of this integral. And this is going to make our job a whole lot simpler. So let's start out by evaluating this integral to substitute v equals t minus u, so that we just have g of v on the inside here. If we do that, dv is going to be equal to dt. And then if we plug that in, let's see what we get. Well, for the lower and upper bounds, if we plug in t minus u, but we get u instead, u minus u is going to give us 0 for the lower bound. That's good, because this looks a lot like our Laplace transform definition. And then we'll have g of t minus u. That's going to turn into g of v. Then we have times e to the negative st, dv equals dt. So we get dv du out here. And the last thing we need to look at here is this negative st, because we're integrating with respect to v now. If we look at v equals t minus u, we could also say that t equals v plus u. So e to the negative st is going to equal e to the negative s times v plus u. And then we can split this up 
into e to the negative s v times e to the negative s u. So let's do that. If we plug in e to the negative s t here, we'll have e to the negative s v, and then I'll put e to the negative s u over here. Notice e to the negative s u, that is a constant. So we can bring that all the way out as well, but let's leave it like this for now because we know this is a constant. The integral from 0 to infinity of g of v times e to the negative s v dv, that is the definition of the Laplace transform of g. So we can write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of f of u, and then e to the negative s u is again a constant, and this part of the integral is going to turn into big G of s. Then we integrate with respect to u. But notice big G of s is again a constant. So we can do the integral from 0 to infinity of f of u times e to the negative s u du. That again looks very much like a Laplace transform. It is another Laplace transform. So the result that we get from this integral is f of s, and we multiply that by big G of s. So that is the result that we get. The Laplace transform of this convolution is equal to big F of s times big G of s. So the reason this is important is not necessarily because we do convolutions all the time, but because when we get the Laplace transform of a product at the end of a differential equation, we can use the convolution theorem to get from this back to our original function in terms of this convolution. That will help us do the inverse Laplace transforms to solve our differential equations. So this is our convolution theorem, and we're going to talk about one more identity here, which is the Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t of f of u du. So in this case, we don't have any second function, it's just the integral of f of u. How can we figure out this answer? Well, in order to do that, we're going to write this as a convolution, because we actually can. If we think about the Laplace transform, this integral, if g of t minus u were just equal to 1, then this would be the integral from 0 to t of f of u du, what we have here. So this integral is actually f convoluted with the function g of t equals 1 with respect to t. And if we do this, this is going to equal f of s times the Laplace transform of 1. Well, what is that? The Laplace transform of 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 times e to the negative st dt. And this is a fairly simple integral to evaluate. You can do that and find that the answer is 1 over s. So that is the Laplace transform of an integral. The Laplace transform of the integral from 0 to t of f of u du gives us f of s times 1 over s, just like this.